Um, hey, Missy, I mean, Mom, I mean, Dad. Yeah? Uh, remember when you said you could take me to see where they filmed the movie The Sandlot? Yeah. Could you show me? Well, yeah, but right now I gotta eat this ice cream, so we'll do it later, okay? Okay, cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, hey, Dad? Yeah? Uh, you think now we could go see the locations? Right now I gotta finish this brownie, but we'll do it soon, okay? I promise. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, hey, Dad? Yeah? You think maybe you could take me to the Sandlot locations now? Yeah, but right now I gotta finish the- Oh, let's take him to the Dawn locations already! Okay, let's go, let's go! Although the movie begins at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, the story actually begins in Salt Lake City, Utah, as we see some boys playing a schoolyard baseball game. Uh, this right here is Nibley Park School here in Salt Lake City, Utah, and as I'm sure you can tell, these are all newer buildings. All of the original ones were torn down. Now, I'm not 100% sure but I believe it was right back here behind these buildings where they were playing that baseball game. And hopefully we can get back there and take a look. I see there's some workers here. And this is definitely it. Right over there in the corner is where they were playing that baseball game. And there's a couple of different ways you can tell. First of all, see those mountains peeking out? Those can be seen in the shot. But I think the real giveaway is this house. Notice that dormer window and the chimney, that can be seen in the movie. It's actually a little bit more visible in real life, but you can definitely make it out in the movie as well. And that would mean just to the right of that house, that's where home plate and the backstop would have been. Now there's also some shots with the camera looking the other way where you can see some of the school buildings behind them. But like I said, all of those buildings were either torn down or heavily remodeled. So none of that looks the same at all. But man, it is so cool to just be walking around on this field where that baseball game was played. So happy I found this. So this neighborhood that I'm currently standing in plays a pretty big role in the movie because three of the main characters live right here. And this home right behind me was the home of Scotty Smalls. After the game, we see the kids walking down the street and then splitting up and going to their different houses. They were walking down this street coming right towards where I'm standing. Meanwhile, Scotty's in the driveway unloading boxes from the U-Haul trailer because he's the new kid in the neighborhood. That U-Haul trailer would have been parked right here at the end of this driveway. As Scotty's taking out boxes, he notices his neighbor across the street, a kid right about his age, and he gets a little overly excited. Of course, the kid across the street gets a little weirded out and then heads inside of his house. At this right here, this was the home of Benny the Jet Rodriguez. Now the colors changed, the roof has changed, a few things have changed here, but the general shape of the house and the layout is still exactly the same. You can definitely recognize it as Benny's house. The next day we see Scotty come running out the front door and then down the driveway. Now a lot has changed here on Scotty's house, but you can still match up those windows near the front porch. And we then see Scotty go running down the sidewalk. And this right here is the sidewalk that he was running down right past this fire hydrant. We then see Scotty run past the front of Vincent Drugs, and we'll get to that in a little bit. He then sneaks over to watch the other boys play a game of baseball at the Sandlot. And that's how he ends up becoming friends with them. He just pretends like he belongs there. Unfortunately, he has no idea how to play baseball though, and the other kids just laugh at him. The next day, Scotty's sitting on his porch, feeling pretty down, but luckily Benny's a really good kid, 
and he comes over to invite Scotty to come play baseball with him again, even though he knows Scotty has no idea what's going on. This building right behind me is featured quite a few times in the movie. This is Vincent Drug, and this is where the kids hang out in back, and they come here to get their baseballs, and this is where Squints sees Wendy Peppercorn walking down the sidewalk right here. Now, if you remember just a bit earlier in the movie, we see Scotty run right past the front of Vincent Drug, and you'll notice that that large Vincent Drug sign is now gone, and the building sits abandoned and deteriorating. And it was in the back parking lot of Vincent Drug where the boys hang out talking about baseball. It's kind of hard to match things up now because there's all these cars parked here, but you can see those stones that are just to the right side of the rear entrance, and then you can also see that little box that's just to the right side of those stones. One thing that's changed back here is there's no longer that Coca-Cola ad. It's now been replaced with this mural of squints. Now, of course, I kind of wish that old school Coca-Cola ad was still here, but I guess if it had to be replaced with something, a mural paying tribute to the movie is a pretty good one. And it was right near the rear entrance to the store where Ham is standing and doing his impression of Babe Ruth. So basically right where this white car is parked, that's where Ham would have been standing. And then Benny and Scotty come walking around the corner and Scotty says this about Babe Ruth. Who's that? Of course, the boys start to freak out and you can see this building behind them. Now this building has changed quite a bit, but that is the same building. It's just been remodeled. And it's also right in front of this building where we get that famous scene where they're saying all of Babe Ruth's nicknames. The Titan of Terror, the Colossus of Clout, and Scotty stands right here in this very spot, completely clueless, having no idea what they're talking about. Now, another thing that's changed back here is the absence of the Vincent Drug sign above the back door. You can still see those two arms that used to hold the sign. And that sign can be seen when the boys come here to purchase the baseball. It shows the sign, and then we see all of the boys rushing at the back door and ripping open the baseball. And although some of the signage is still here, that one is now gone. Now, the store closed down quite a while ago, but luckily, at least for now, all of the signage is still up. And especially that one that you can see in the movie. And you can see they're doing some major construction in there. It's actually missing the roof in one section. But as for right now, it's still Vincent Drug. Oh man. It looks like it's been frozen in time. And I'm sure that any day this will all be gone. There's actually a couple of different videos that uh, people have done over the years and the buildings changed a little bit each in each video. So probably the next person who does a video here, all of this will be gone. Visit our new sugar free candy department. Now, pretty much the entire block where Vincent Drug is, is uh, under construction. All the buildings are vacant. I actually, I don't know if there's any open, it is early, so there might be some, um, but it's a shame too, because this is a really, really cool street. Anyways, after they leave the drugstore, they head over to the sandlot and they play a game of baseball and Benny puts all of his faith into Scotty and you're never gonna believe this, Scotty actually catches the ball. I guess there's hope for that boy after all. So after the boys get done playing baseball, they're walking down the street right here, and then they kind of split up. Benny goes to his house, Scotty goes straight ahead to his house, and then Ham cuts right over here. This right here was Ham's house. Although you don't actually see Ham's house just yet, you actually only see it one time in the movie, and it's pretty brief. And we'll get to that scene in just a little bit. Now we find ourselves back at Vincent Drug. We see a little boy out front riding the horse, when Squints and Yaya come out the front door and Squint stops and looks down the street 
and there she is, Windy Peppercorn. Notice that fire hydrant and tree and lamppost, it's all still there. Right here is where Windy would have been walking down the street coming straight towards where I'm standing. As she was pretty far down there, they're using a zoom lens to make her look a bit closer than she actually is. As Squint stands right in front of the pharmacy, trying not to lose his mind as Wendy gets closer and closer to him. Now the boys usually play baseball every single day, but on this day it was just too hot and they all voted to go to the pool. And there it is. As you can see, some things have changed, but the building itself is still exactly the same. It even has the same design painted on it. It's actually pretty incredible how much things haven't changed at this pool. So it was a pretty hot day and the pool was really crowded and I didn't want to get too close and weird everyone out that was trying to enjoy the pool. But if you look right there where those two double doors are, that's basically where Ham is walking when he stops and does his muscle pose for the girls that are watching him. And that's just before he does a cannonball into the pool, soaking all of the girls that are sunbathing. Now you can see the diving board that Squints jumps off of is no longer there. There's actually a lifeguard tower where that diving board was. And Windy Peppercorn's lifeguard tower would have been right over here. You can see that lamppost and that last window behind her. So Squints decides he's gonna go for it and he jumps off the diving board and pretends to drown, forcing Windy to save him. And when she does, he makes his move. Wendy grabs Squints and drags him out of the pool and all the boys are banned from the pool for life. They help Squints up off the ground and they take off running and I don't know who's throwing their clothes out of the locker room, but they pick up their clothes and they go running around the side of the building. Now there's now a tree blocking that shot, but basically right here is where the boys were running and then they go around the side into the back. Now they come running around the back side of the pool and Ham and Squint stop right here next to this wall. And as they're running away, Squint stops and he wants to get one more look at Wendy. Squint walks up to the fence and he's standing right here staring at Wendy. And that's when Wendy gives him a little smile and a wave and completely makes his entire summer. So I think probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie because it just really makes me feel that summertime nostalgia is the 4th of July scene where they come running out of Scotty's house and they come right out here into the street and this is all full of picnic tables with all of the food on it and there's everybody you know having a good time they're doing fireworks and Ham comes running out of his house grabs a bunch of food and then they go running off down the street to go play baseball. And as they're running down the street, you can see all the fireworks and everyone's just having a good time. And like I said, it just gives me that summertime, that nostalgia vibe. I, I love that scene. This is the Little League field in Riverside Park in Salt Lake City, Utah. And this is where they play against the real Little League team when they show up to the sandlot and challenge them. You know, if my dog was as ugly as you, I'd shave his butt and teach him to walk backwards. Notice those stairs on the right side of the building. Those can be seen multiple times throughout this scene. Also notice that house and those bleachers as Benny runs the bases. And as he heads to third base, notice those bleachers and the dugout. Then we get a nice overhead shot of the entire field. Once again, we're at Vincent Drugs. We get a shot of the sign and then of the entire gang coming out of the front doors. Now there it is, the very same sign still there all these years later, but probably not for much longer. Now the shot in the movie is taken at more of an angle, but because of this tree, it's not really possible anymore. They go running around the corner right here and then the camera kind of zooms in on that billboard right here with the dog. It would have been right there. 
So in case you've never seen it, basically what happens is the kids are playing baseball when Benny hits the ball too hard and knocks the insides out, and now they don't have a ball to play with. That's when Scotty says he knows where he can get a ball. He heads home, goes into his stepdad's office, and takes his autographed Babe Ruth baseball. They play a game of ball with it until it ends up getting knocked over the fence into the old man's yard, and they're not able to get it back because of the dog that they refer to as the Beast. Scotty then tells them that they need to get the ball back because it was signed by some lady named Babe Ruth. They all freak out and realize they have to get the ball back. A decent chunk of the movie is then spent with them making different contraptions and coming up with different plans and schemes to try and get the ball back, all of which they fail at. Benny then has a dream where Babe Ruth visits him and inspires him. The next day, he tells the others he's going to just grab the ball and make a run for it. He actually gets the ball and makes it back over the fence. The only problem is Hercules follows him and a chase through the entire town begins. So Benny's being chased by the beast, whose name is actually Hercules, and they're running through an alley and Benny's throwing trash cans at him. And this is the alley that they were running through. If you pay close attention to that scene, you can not only see those utility poles, but you can also see that large white garage on the left side. Benny runs right in front of it. And not only can you see this garage, but you can also see this one on the right side, but you gotta like pause it to see that one. It's really quick. Benny jumps over a wall and the dog follows and they're headed right towards the boys club where a bunch of kids are inside watching a movie. And here's that building. In the shot, you can see this and these windows over here. Now, of course, the sign is gone and so is the awning over the door. But other than that, the building looks the same. And it's actually the window on the left side of this door right after Benny goes through the door Hercules jumps up and jumps right through that window on the left side. The rest of the gang runs by the alley and sees the mess and they know that Hercules and Benny have been through there. Benny then runs right through the middle of the Founders Day picnic and Hercules follows him as they run across all the picnic tables. And that was filmed right here in Liberty Park. Now, I think this might also be the location that they used for the carnival scene earlier in the movie, but I can't say 100%. Hercules then chases Benny through the neighborhood pool, and the rest of the gang comes running around the front and sees Benny running right towards them, and they stop dead in their tracks right here in this very spot. Benny runs by and tells them to head for the sandlot as Hercules is right behind him running down the sidewalk. As Hercules passes by, the boys turn around, head down the stairs, and head for the sandlot. So they make it back to the sandlot, but when Benny and Hercules hop the fence, the fence falls over and on top of Hercules. They're able to lift the fence off of the dog and free him, and Hercules is now their friend. They know that they have to tell the old man what happened, so they knock on the door, and it turns out that the old man that lives there is none other than Darth Vader, James Earl Jones himself. And it also turns out that not only is he a huge baseball fan, he also played baseball with Babe Ruth, and he ends up giving them a baseball signed by the entire 1927 Yankees, and in turn, the boys agree to come by once a week and talk about baseball with him. And here it is, the moment that you've all been waiting for, one of the biggest stars of the movie. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Sandlot. And this is about as close as we can get to it. Uh, the person that owns this field doesn't really like people coming to see it. So you actually have to come around to the backside and there's this little spot where you can look in between the houses. But it was right here in front of me. This would have been where home plate was and the backstop would have been right there in front of us. Now, I know that in the past, the people that live in this house have been pretty inviting and they've let people come up onto their property to get a closer look, but I wouldn't want to do that without them inviting me. So hopefully they'll see me out here and maybe they'll come out and invite me up. Now, this house on the left, this can be seen in the movie, but from the other direction, along with this house over here, this house has a really unique roof line. You can see it a few times in the movie. Hopefully I'll be able to show you that. You can see right down here by the gate, there's two rocks. One of them is painted like a baseball, and the other one has the great Hambino on it. 
So it's obvious that the people who live here are supporters of the movie. Unfortunately, they're not the ones who own the sand lot. Now it's kind of hard to see, but if you look right there, there's two wooden posts sticking up out of the ground. And some believe that those wooden posts are part of the sand lot set. Couldn't say for sure, but it's definitely possible. All right, so we're gonna have to look at the sand lot from up above, and this is it. Right over there, that's where we were standing. That's where home plate was. And that's the house that we were standing next to. And take a look at that roof line. Like I said, you can see that multiple times in the movie. Also that other house right over here, that can also be seen. And all of this out here, this was the outfield. There would have been a fence. And on the other side of that is where they would have built James Earl Jones's house. Now, as my luck would have it, just about two weeks after my visit, they actually had an event here where they showed the movie on the actual sand lot. Some of the original cast members were here and they dressed it up to look like it did in the movie. And uh, yeah, I had no idea that was gonna be happening, but you know, these things happen sometimes. I'm still just really glad that I got to visit this location. And back to Los Angeles I go because the movie ends right where it began at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California. This is where we find out that Scotty grew up to be a baseball announcer, even though he really knew nothing about baseball in the beginning of the movie. And it turns out that Benny grew up to be Benny the Jet Rodriguez, a star baseball player for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.